Hello and welcome back to another character creation video. My name is Lumen and today we have a look at War Tales. This is an open world turn-based tactical RPG in which you lead a group of mercenaries in their search for wealth across a massive medieval universe. You get to explore the world, recruit companions, collect bounties and unravel the secrets of the tombs of the ancients. You also get to create and customize characters, and that's why we're here. So, if you'd like to read more about War Tales, you can do so by following the links in the description of this video. And on top of that, the timestamps will help you jump between the different parts of the video, so you can find what you're looking for and leave satisfied. For this video, we are going to be jumping in and having a look at the game options first, because there's actually a lot of stuff that you can change and set up when you first jump in. Then we'll look at the classes available, then the cosmetic stuff, like the character customization, and then finally the horse. So you probably want to hang around for that. <laughs> Not much going on there, but it's still pretty cool that you can customize the horse. So, with that said, let us jump in and have a peek. First things first, you choose your destiny. Your companions are apprentice friends looking for an adventure. That gives you extra influence, but less raw materials. Your starting companions there are the swordsman, the archer, the ranger, and the brute. We're going to cover that in just a little bit. It's good to know what these characters and classes do so that you can pick something that, you know, is balanced or at least suits what you're looking for in that regard. Then you can have men escorting merchants who lost their employer. That gives you extra money, less medicine, and it gives you a swordsman, a warrior, a spearman, and a brute. Deserters fleeing an abusive captain. That gives you extra raw materials, but extra suspicion. Then your starting companions are the swordsman, warrior, archer, and ranger. Then young farmers looking for a better life. That gives you some bread. And some, well, a little bit less happiness. Starting companions are brute spearmen, spearmen, and archer. That's because you work the fields, you know, with the, uh, okay. Bandits looking to escape the guard. You get some braised chicken, which are stolen items, and some cloth, which are also stolen items. Then you start with a brute, a ranger, a ranger, and an archer. So, you can pick basically anyone you want here. We're going to take the first one because it's four different classes. Then, you get to choose what your companions are used to or, or do or are all about. They're used to long walks. That gives you a reduction of the speed at which the troops' fatigue stacks. Cunning fighters. Experience gained in combat's increased. Influence gained after battle is increased. Uh, incredible resilience. That's extra constitution. Excellent at slap games is extra critical damage. And then quick learners is just all round uh, increased experience for each profession. Finally, flaws. You pick some debuffs. Because, you know, if you're picking the good stuff, you've got to pick some of the bad as well. Somewhat meek appearance. The carrying capacity is decreased. Eternal dissatisfaction. Their happiness uh, is uh, decreased. An uncommon bout of bad luck. Critical hit reduced. A very hard time getting up. The danger during rest encounters is increased. And then lack of self-confidence is willpower reduced. So we'll take the carrying capacity next. Then you get to pick whether you want adaptive exploration or region locked exploration. The way this works basically is if it's adaptive then it all adapts to your troops power. So if you move from one area to the next the mobs in those areas, the enemies in those areas, they will be sort of around the right level. And if it's region locked, then the difficulty is set and you will know, okay, that's a harder area, that's the easier area, and you'll sort of have to navigate that yourself. I personally like the idea of region locked. It sort of gives you something to fight for, you know, to work towards, you know, but I think they're both pretty cool. And then finally, you get to pick a start in region. You only have one to start with right at the very beginning. It's called uh, Tiltron Country. Uh, county, sorry, it's an independent state, and if you play and progress through the campaign, then you can unlock more starting regions to choose from. Pretty cool. It's a good way of doing it, I think. Then you get to pick your combat difficulty, novice, experienced, or expert. It's pretty self-explanatory, but here it is. Uh, you want an easier combat experience, tactical battles, and the possibility of losing companions does not scare you, or finally one mistake and you're dead. Survival difficulty, this is everything except combat. Uh, novice, management, difficulty is tailored to be flexible and, and unintrusive. And then on experienced, you will need to manage your combat's hunger, fatigue, and wages daily. And then finally on expert, surviving and money saving will be painful endeavors. Finally, save mode, limited, free, and Iron Man. 
Uh, limited is... I'm not sure why it's set up like this. So the, the freeze, just you can save any time, right? And, and that's like, you know... Limited is... You can only save one once per game, but you can go back at any time to a certain checkpoint. So it's an interesting way of doing things. It's the most, like, worry-free, I suppose. Uh, but, you know, I think free saving just makes the most sense. Then there's Iron Man, which means even if you make mistakes, you just got to live with it. So it doesn't really matter. You can pick what you want here. And then finally, it throws us in. And this brings us to the classes. So... I'm going to cover the classes now. While I'm not showing them all right here, I'm showing you the Ranger, the Archer, the Brute, and the Swordsman. I will show you the others in just a moment. We're going to start with the Ranger. Okay. The Ranger is a high mobility hit and run class that focuses on speed, tactical flexibility, and precision critical damage. You can see here he has a stab and a run ability. And you can change that to Wrath, which is sort of like an extra critical hit uh, they call it the Fatal Blow ability, but yeah. Then you can also use First Aid over here. Most of the characters have two or three that they can pick from, from these skills over here. Right? So you can sort of mix and match what you want. And then a lot of them can change their starting weapon, you'll see as we jump through. The traits we're going to look at at the end. So there's a lot of them here. We'll look at them when we're done with the classes. And you'll be able to just check them all out in one place. Next up we have the Archer. Archers are the party's overwatch, and they sort of like range support with extreme range compared to the others, but slightly lower damage overall to make up for it. They only have the bow as a starting weapon. I'm not sure if they pick up other stuff later, but there you go. And then they have aim as an ability and run. First aid, and we're back on, back on aim. There you go. Next up, the brute. Brutes are basically your brawlers. Close range fighters, they thrive in the thick of battle. Lots of health, decent melee damage. Pretty cool. The tankard around the waist. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, the abilities, you can see here, pound when you have the club. And then if you switch over to the two-handed weapon, then you have ram. And you can switch between those if you'd like. Then they have taunt as their utility. Wrath, which we saw before. And first aid as well. Pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. Then we have the Swordsman over here. This is sort of more flexible than the Brute. It's more of a support as well. He can do either defensive or offensive roles, and he can sort of change things up as the party needs it. So he's sort of the, the guy that you shove into any position that needs filling, basically. Uh, his starting weapon can be the two-hander or the sword and board, which is kind of nice. He gets cleave over there and slice over there. He can also taunt. He can also cast Wrath, and he can also do First Aid. There you go. So he's sl slightly more balanced melee fighter. Now to show you the other classes, we're going to go back quickly. We're going to go to New Game again, and then we're going to pick one that has... Because there's still the Warrior and the Spearman. So we'll take one that has the Warrior and the Spearman in. That's this one. And then we'll just jump into the rest of them. And I can show you what those look like. So, here's the Warrior. It's funny, like, the Swordsman and the Warrior seem very similar, but it's... They are. They actually are. But it's, 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 a, it's a complex situation. So the Warrior specifically is a combo of the Swordsman and the Brute. Very versatile, and he can be made to fight quite effectively against multiple enemies at a time. So he's got, like, I want to say more AoE damage, but, yeah, he's a mix of those two. Starting weapons are, as you can see over here, the halberd or the small hand axe with a shield then he has the first aid taunt and wrath as well and then next up and finally we have the spearman spearman is high damage with good reach because obviously you're using a spear and then they can also attack enemies from like i want to say a couple of tiles away so without actually fully approaching them which is pretty fantastic. They also have some decent utility and knockback. You don't get to change their starting weapon. They start with the pitchfork over here. Uh, but their utility is the same. It's wrath and first aid and run. And that is that for the classes. Now, for the traits, once you've sort of picked your classes and you've ironed out what you want to do with them, you get to pick traits. The way this works is 
you pick a positive trait, you get that for free. So if you want to take bloodthirsty, boom, you've got it, right? Then you get to pick another positive trait if you want it, but then it will ask you to add a negative trait as well. So let's have a look. So you can get basically one for free, and then you can get another one if you want to sacrifice it for that negative trait. Uh, first up, we have bloodthirsty, which is extra critical hit. Then we have strong, which is, well, extra strength. Then we have nimble, extra dexterity. Hardworking, that's more experience. I like the idea of that. Uh, clever, which is, that's profession experience, and this is just more overall experience. Uh, quick, movement speed increased. Wages by 10%, that's volunteer. Thick skinned is 3% base guard. And finally, stocky is carrying capacity increased by 3. Then, if you pick one of these, like I said, you get to pick your other one over here. These are exactly the same, nothing different over here. But then you have to pick a negative trait. Glutton, he eats extra every day. Pickpocket, he gets extra wages. Well, he takes extra wages. Lazy, uh, he earns less experience. Stupid, less experience. Club-footed, movement reduced. You can see that there's sort of a theme here. Carrying capacity reduced on loafer. Depressed, his willpower is reduced. And finally, drunkard, must consume alcohol with every meal to be happy. Yeah, you can sort of work out what would be best for you. And I think you can probably come up with some decent combinations. There are sacrifices that can be made, I think, to sort of have this all make sense. Now, with that done, that's the game options, the classes, and the traits covered. Now we're going to look at the actual customization. So you can customize all of these. There's male and female setups. I'm not going to show you every class's outfit again. You've seen them sort of briefly, but it's just the outfit. So the class is the outfit and the weapon. The customization options on the males and the females, they're the same across all the classes. The classes don't have unique customization in any way. So we're going to jump in and look at the males first. Then we will look at the female afterwards. And then the best part, we'll customize the pony. Absolutely the best part. Uh, you get to do your name and you can random. I like when they let you random names. It's kind of a nice thing to do. Then you get to choose male or female. Then face. There's actually some decent options here. I feel like for a game like this where you are not really, and you'll see I'm going through them, I'm, I'm already cycling, there's not that many, but it's a game like this where you're not really like fully up close and personal the whole time, and it's a game where you customize an entire party. It's a surprising number of, of options. Let's take this one quickly, it's sort of smoother so you can see the details on it. Skin tone. There are a variety of skin tones here, but you can immediately tell that there are no real darker ones. I didn't really know what the idea behind that was, but like, knee-jerk reaction is that it's quite clearly because you are playing a certain role here, and certain skin tones and heritages and ethnicities would not suit it. You are playing as these characters in this setting, in this medieval universe, in this time, in this age. So... Because of that, skin tones, they are what they are, you know? That's what you're going to find in this time. I like the way the characters look, though. I think they look fantastic. Here's the hair. They did a, a good job. Like this, it could have been way less detailed. There could have been far less to work with here, but they managed to throw in a couple of trendy styles. They managed to throw in a couple of, well, let's just say suited styles to this age. You know, they've got the Friar Tuck here, and I appreciate that. It's a pity they don't have the bald head on top, isn't it? They got some longer styles, some shorter styles. It's it's good. Like, it's good. And sure, well, here's actually, there's the bald head on top. Perfect. Absolutely what I was looking for. I think that, again, for, like, this kind of game, this is more than one would expect. And this is more than I've seen in, like, MMOs. Like, this is more than I've seen in proper RPGs and stuff. Like, this is just a decent selection, you know? kind of sick and visually yeah sure I like it okay we're back on the bald head hair color some decent shades here and you could maybe already have told that we are very much grounded in reality here you are not working with bright colors like pinks purples greens and uh, yellows uh, these are very much just set in stone human hair colors no dyes involved no nothing like that it's fine it looks good facial hair some nice options here as well i mean the fact that there is facial hair to choose from and it's not locked to the face that's a win like for real that's a win 
There are some pretty good beard styles here. I, I skipped through them pretty quickly there. I, I thought I thought I was already through them, but there's actually a lot. Wow. Yeah. And again, a lot of these are sort of very much suited to the time we are in. And I like it. Sort of where you'd expect these styles to be uh, commonly found. I think it looks kind of sick. It's cool. Yeah. And then you can change your clothing color. Now, the clothing color, it works differently on each of these, but you can sort of see which part changes. It's the, it's the accent, and you will see on each class that you're looking at here, it's sort of the same thing. You know? There's nothing really special here. You can just sort of distinguish between your different party members by, by having a, each a unique color, if you'd like. It's not a very big, impactful thing, but it's there. Then, that's it. You get to randomize a little bit, and I'm going to randomize now. Uh, before we jump onto the female customization and you can sort of get an idea for uh, the the like overall style that you can go with here there's a lot of cool things you can do you can make uh, older gruffer looking men you can make younger greener looking men uh, you can make everything in between and to be honest again i think it's more than we probably deserve in a game like this so kudos to the devs for doing this really nice really really cool Yeah, I mean, I guess there's a grim determination on all these faces. You're not going to be able to wash that away all that easily. That is just the game that you're playing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's called War Tales, after all, guys. But I like it. I like it. I mean, the, the idea of making like a clean-shaven, uh, long-haired, like, let me show you what I mean. It just, it, it sort of also just shows you that there's so much more. If you take the face and make it slightly smoother... Like this one. You can you can really like... And then you compare this guy to that guy. And you compare this guy to something like this. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay. Let's jump on to female. Boom. The female style's pretty cool. Uh, we're gonna, I'm just going to change the hair so we can see more of the face quickly. There we go. Some nice faces. I like the hawkish nose. Very good. I like the fact that you are not looking at a bunch of supermodels here. You are looking at characters that look like they come from the places that they come in from. And they have actual personality. Character on their faces. I think it's kind of nice. You know? They look cool. And I'm a fan. I get the feeling the females have a couple more faces than the males, but I didn't count it now, so I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to. I'm not going to put that out there. Skin tone. Probably of all the stuff, the most disappointing. But again, totally understand why there are so few skin tones. It makes sense given the setting of the game. Okay, so there's not a lot. If I skip through there, you'll see that's that's like that's it. You know, you can go a little lighter, you can go a little darker, more tanned, I suppose, and that's that. Here. There are some unique hairstyles to female, and then there are some that are shared between male and female. Um, yeah, I understand it. Once again, if you are already limiting the skin color because of the setting, then it makes sense that you are limiting some of the hairstyles for the setting as well. Uh, because the idea of having such a hairstyle on a male at this time, it might have been outrageous, I guess. It might have been outrageous. So you'll see there are some that are shared, but there are a lot of unique ones here. And that's, yeah, that's cool, man. I think it's good. I like this one. I think we have come back to the start. There we go. Hair color. Same as on the males. You have some slightly interesting colors, like as an example, this one. Where it's sort of a little different than you'd expect, but for the most part, heavily grounded in reality. Even the blonde isn't that blonde. Like, you look like the blondest one they have is something like this. It's not all that bright. Then, unfortunately, uh, no facial hair on the ladies. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ladies. Uh, you will have to live with that. It is most definitely your loss. Then finally, clothing. You get to change the clothing color. 
Not much going on here, but it's cool that they give you the option regardless. Then, let's randomize. So, I, I personally feel that the male customization gives a lot more variety. I feel like the ladies are a little boring compared. And that, I think, is mostly just because the ladies just look good, you know, all around. It's just, they look good. It's, yeah. The males, they've got everything, you know. They, they've, they've got basically the... Uh, completely old and gnarled look then they got the young bushy-tailed bright-eyed new recruit and they got everything between uh, and i think that it, it sort of just makes more of an impact i want to say uh, and then the lady ones they are sort of slightly more standard you know that the breadth of customization is slightly lower but you can make some nice characters and that's all that matters once again in a game where you are most definitely not up close and personal all the time so that brings us to the end of the male and female customization. Now the most important part. The pony customization. Yeah. Same traits here. Just feel like I should show it to you. And then they got a rush ability. Now I'm sorry if I led you on with this. Uh, it's my job. <laughs> but there's only a few choices here. It's still the best part though. You get to name the pony. Whatever you'd like. Uh, you, funny enough there's no randomization for the name here okay so they're not going to like be creative with that there is randomization for the character names but not for the pony then you get to change what it looks like i love it i love it i i absolutely love it it's like you know i i played red dead online and red dead redemption 2 obviously the single player version of it and one of my favorite things was just not so much collecting the horses but like going out and trying to find those unique ones those cool looking horses, those, those, uh, you know. Oh, that's the one, dude. I love it. Oh, or the pure white one. You see, this is what you guys came for, huh? And then we're back at the start. That's what you guys came for. I like, I like the, the dead black eyes. Perfect, perfect, perfect. That's how I like my ponies. So that's it. No randomization here. You're just getting to pick the skin. I am a big fan of the spotty one, and I'm a big fan of the white one, and I kind of like the greys, like, and the black one is nice too. Yeah, but that's it. There you go. War Tales. The game options. The classes, the traits, the cosmetic options and customization, and the pony. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed a quick look at what's available here. If you are playing the game, I'd love to hear from you what you think of the game. I personally like the customization options. I think they gave us a lot to work with here. And I'm, I don't mean just with the customization of the character itself in terms of its physical appearance uh, and the pony. I mean just for the game options and stuff like that. You can really make your runs different with all the options that they give you. You can sort of mix things up quite a lot uh, and in doing so make each run unique. It's cool. It's cool. I think it's a, a really fun thing and I think that the customization options they mean that much more if you're playing with someone uh, which you can do and that's awesome so yeah i like it i think again for a game of this style it has absolutely nailed it they did a an awesome job on pretty much everything that they've added here and again given the camera angle you're going to be working with given the limited visibility of the characters it's an obscene amount of customization just given that so that's straight up awesome yeah great great very impressed and that will bring me to the end as always you guys can give this video a like and share it and do all that other good stuff subscribe if you haven't already and check back here soon for more most importantly happy creating those characters happy that <laughs>